the group was also in the headlines as the French government criticised the court ruling, recognising it as a religion, and the group was certain to continue to cause outcry both here and abroad. Scientology, however, is just the most visible of the plethora of new religious movements or cults which have attracted an estimated 50,000 Irish people into their ranks. The practices of some of these movements can be alarming, but their members insist on the right to respect for their religions and sometimes claim they're being discriminated against and harassed. So is Scientology a bona fide religion or a sinister cult which breaks up families? David Nally reports. Its origin as the creation of an American pulp science fiction writer from the 1950s may seem bizarre, and many of its beliefs even more so. But Scientology, a mix of religion, pop science and personality cult, is growing fast throughout the world and in Ireland. Over the last 20 years, Scientology leaders, including its late founder L. Ron Hubbard, have been convicted of fraud and dirty tricks in France and America while courts in Britain and the US have described it as corrupt, sinister and dangerous, its founder as a pathological liar. Former members have accused it of harassing themselves and other perceived enemies. It claims it has the path to total freedom, but newspapers and magazines have called it a greedy business which squeezes money out of its members with a zeal that drives some to suicide, a claim supported by the French court. All of this leaves Scientology devotees unimpressed. These are allegations that are made by people that don't include our members. I don't know what to say. It's any religion through history has had its critics, and ours is no different. You know, you go back to the early days of Christianity, obviously you've got people being thrown to the lions. Jesus Christ found guilty in a court of law and sentenced to death. Most of the people who get involved in Scientology wish to find out for, for themselves what the truth of, of it is, and they come in and ask uh, questions of us. They've heard all of the bad stuff in the media, but they, they decide they want to come in and find out for, for themselves what we have, have to say. Wherever it goes, Scientology is followed by protest and legal actions, and Ireland has been no exception. I believe that uh, Odin, my brother, was uh, abducted by the Church of Scientology, and he has been coerced, uh, he has made false allegations, against the family and, uh, and I, don't, I do, as I say, I know my brother well and I know that it was not, it's not him that has made these statements, it, it, it's, it, it, he has been coerced. How are you doing? Three personality tester. The Fortune family's anger and distress won national attention and it eventually led here to the High Court in London. The Church of Scientology sought an injunction to keep the Fortune family and their supporters away from its English headquarters. Odin Fortune supported the Church of Scientology in its case against his own family, and afterwards he insisted to us that he hadn't been brainwashed. I'm free to do what I want. And have you been brainwashed in some way? As I say, it's absurd. Well, why then did you leave under such apparently sudden and mysterious circumstances? Why don't you talk to your family on your own? I'm, I've attempted to. I was in this building last Friday to talk to them. They so. say that they can't get to talk to you alone, though. Well, it's, that's not true. I actually did talk to my mum and dad alone. So you've no problem talking to them alone anymore? Not at all. I, I want to have a good relationship with them, like, like I've always had. They say that you're shepherded around by minders, by Scientologists all the time, who tell you what to say. Is that the case? Well, I'm not being told what to say right now, so... Okay. All right, Odin. Thanks for talking to us. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. With that, Odin returned to the house in which he is staying near Scientology headquarters, along with his Scientologist companions and the solicitor the church had provided. He was a very pleasant, very outgoing and cheery little boy. All his endeavourment, even at school. He met a girl from Denmark, so I arranged for him to get a loan for to go over, you know. And that's when he got involved over there. He was doing, uh, I believe he was doing menial jobs there, and he's also had a flat, and he wasn't able to keep up the repayments. That's what I understand. And that's when he became involved. He met a Scientologist there that... Uh, introduced him to Scientology then. Ma'am, he says, he rang me one day and I said, I don't think I'll get home for Christmas. We're terribly busy. 
I said, look here, Aldrin, I said. How come? I said, you're so busy. I said, you must be making plenty of money at this stage. You know, you're making so much money, are you, that you're so busy? And he didn't answer me. He says, I may not get home now. I'm not sure yet. And I went furious on the phone. And I said, of course you're coming home for Christmas. Everybody comes home for Christmas. Denise is coming. And if you're not coming, we will be over for you. He came into the kitchen and I knew he was coming and I knew it was him, just barely knew him. And I said, hello, Odin. But I paused for a minute before I went to put my arms around him. And I looked up and I said to him, not verbally, but just with my inner feelings, is it Odin? And he said, he put my arms, he put his arms around me and he said, hi, ma'am. And I just felt bones. And I just said, what is coming home to me for myself? I said, what has gone wrong? He never appeared home in such a state before. Even his eyes were just going around the kitchen in a daze. He was dazed looking. He just was incapable of walking out, going anywhere. He remained in his bedroom most of the day. Mentally, he just was not. He was not the old that we all knew. He had changed so much. He wasn't hardly talking or anything like that. At first I didn't talk at all, to be honest with you, but then once he did get a conversation, um, he only gave about two sentences, and then he kind of just seemed to switch off and stare back into space again. Odrin had intended going to America to pursue Scientology, but instead he stayed in Gory for five months. His parents say his stay was voluntary and beneficial, if initially reluctant. But Odrin himself now says he was held against his will while experts were brought in to deprogram him. Odrin told me when he came home at Christmas to visit his parents, individuals, members of his family and these so-called faith breakers actually held him against his, his will and tried um, uh, um, unsuccessfully, as we, we've seen, for over a period of five months to try and force him to give up his, his church. See, and they were, In fact, they, um, Odin claimed they kept him up for 25 hours at a stretch you know, without sleep, without food, bombarding him with negative and total false information about our church to try and persuade him, to try and break his, uh, his, his uh, convictions in his church, you see. I take exception it was a Late Late Show debate on Scientology in 1995 which first crystallized the fortune's worries about the group and made them resolve to dissuade Odrin from his involvement. I am very angry with what Scientology has done to our family, what it's done to numerous people. Scientology people have, people has have done me. nothing to your family Let me finish. since the day you and I Let first me finish. met, PJ, since the day you and I first met Let over the me telephone, You're a it has rude been, person. I'm a very rude person, it has been an incessant, like incessant barrage of letters and threats from you. I knew about Mr. Phelan and he gave me the name of a person that I could speak to. I, I asked him... Mr. Fiena and his family from the yeah, Late Late Show. Yeah, from the Late Late Show, yes. Yeah. And uh, I spoke to him, and he told me about uh, a person that would be able to help me. Bonnie Woods was one of those to whom the fortunes turned. A Scientology member for eight years, she rose to a senior level, but is now one of its most hated enemies. I am a Christian counsellor, you know, I'm a family counsellor, and because I have experience with Scientology as a former member, obviously I was in the best position to talk to Odrin about his involvement. And then you have the whole area of what we call exit counselling, and the whole purpose of an intervention is simply to offer the member the opportunity to see information he's not been shown. And I operate as a Christian counsellor totally with the premise that people are there to talk to me by their own consent. If they don't want to talk to me, I'm out of there. In my experience, a lot of people are spending a lot of money. I have counseled, I suppose, 20 people in the last few years who have left Scientology. And in every case, I find a case where they have been hounded, pushed, phoned up, contacted for courses. Even when they've left the house five years later, I've got people saying, would you like these books that they're sending here uh, that's a strange way to be a church. That seems to me more like the way that a business operates. It's natural for families to be concerned or to have a fear of the unknown. This is a natural phenomenon. But a deprogrammer will come along and they will seize upon this. They will inflame it with propaganda, with distortions, with 
misinformation and they will turn those concerns into intense hatred and fear to the point where the family will do anything needful to supposedly rescue their loved one from the new religion. I think there's no doubt that they exercise pressure, but I think as soon as you say that it's important to say that so do other organizations exercise pressure. Some of them are credited uh, mainstream religious movements or indeed things like rugby clubs and golf clubs. But equally, it would be true to say that those who are seeking to bring people out of organizations also use methods which are clearly interfering with their free will and freedom of action and freedom of movement. The family's attempts um, to turn Odrin away from Scientology failed, and on June 1st last, what they had dreaded came to pass. Odrin was working in, in, in this bar, and uh, we've now been led to believe two gentlemen walked in, one into this bar, and also one into the lounge at, at the rear. And Odrin said to the barman that uh, I'll be back in a moment. He walked out the door, and basically he hasn't been here since. He phoned me, right? And uh, so I, I organized with him on, on the phone how I would, we would make ourselves known to him and how he would make himself known to us. And then uh, Odin came out from the bar where he was working, jumped into the car and we drove off. And he was absolutely delighted. I can't stress how relieved and pleased this guy, guy was. Scientology says it doesn't tell members what to say to their families. But it describes ardent Scientology critics, including family members, as suppressive persons and advises members how to handle communications with them or, as a last resort, disconnect completely. Yeah, I mean, Audrin is familiar with those materials and he, he has advice from those materials, he has advice from us and his advice is to sort the relationship out with his family, absolutely. And I think it's clear and the family should know that he wants to reconcile. We've been saying it in the media, Audrin has said it in the media, he wants to reconcile things with the family. I think the requirement for that which he sees, and we see, is that the deprogrammers need to stop harassing the family and creating the conflict. Scientology claims its methods are scientific, but the negative results of its personality test have conflicted with the results of standard psychological profiles. Its e-meter is supposed to identify past traumas by registering changes in the body's electricity when such events are called to mind, but we found that claim unconvincing. Doesn't it have as much to do with how tightly I clasp the electrodes? As well? Yes, of, yes. Of, 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 of course, there's, there's skin uh, contact will obviously affect the um, electrodes, but normally in the can success session, the person who's holding the cans is holding them in a relaxed manner, so they're holding the cans the same way the whole time. Odrin Fortune, who now lives near Scientology's headquarters in England, has heard all the arguments against Scientology many times and has had many chances to leave. But he's chosen to continue as a full-time member and shows little sign of being brainwashed. He made it clear to us that it wasn't Scientologists whose attentions were unwanted. What I want to say is actually I just wanted to program to leave my family and myself alone. They've done a lot of destructive actions so far and they're right behind the scenes here. I think they're even openly saying that they're trying to cancel my parents. But they're actually doing just a lot of destructive action. That's my message. That's it. Do you think they're to blame for all the... That's the message. Okay. All right. Thanks, Odin. Okay. Good luck. I think it's very dangerous to belong to anything that has an extremely authoritarian leader who has complete control over the way you think and the way you feel. And the evidence would indicate in my case that Mr. Hubbard was a charlatan and a fraud and he had a hidden agenda and people should be protected from that. What was his hidden agenda? Well, his hidden agenda, I would think, was some sort of world control. I still believe that Scientology and, uh, and its uh, beliefs are guaranteed by our Constitution, even though I profoundly disagree with them. I believe that they are not for the benefit of society as they claim. I believe them to be, uh, uh, of the groups in Ireland, the one that I would have the most concern about. We have a... Uh methodology and we have educational materials that will help a person isolate those in, the, in their lives who are attacking them um, because Scientology does have that methodology which is you. Um, this doesn't exist anywhere else that you can actually isolate the kind of people who do give you a hard time because sometimes they're not easy to spot and in Scientology the person can isolate who they are and sometimes they're very easy to spot because they're just outright attacking you 
and the person but the person has to make up his own mind he has to decide for himself whether he wants to several connection with that person when you see him so transformed by Scientology it just says you know that's enough if, if he was doing something for himself and something he was we were really happy but or he was really happy we we're just not happy for anything but happy because we see this transformation is just too great for us to be happy that report from David Nally. That's all from us for tonight. We're back again next Thursday, but until then, from everyone on the programme, a very good night.